everyone. Uh, in the last video, we introduced polynomial rings, and uh, today we're going to sort of uh, follow up. Um, the, the next couple of videos, I think, will be on polynomial rings. Um, and again, we're going to be dealing with polynomial rings over a field, K, and the goal in this lecture is to describe some uh, sort of a lot of um, similarities between polynomial rings and the integers. Uh, so we saw previously that um, the uh, the polynomial ring over a field, or more generally over an integral domain, is also an integral domain, um, which is something that Z has, right? Uh, but today we're going to get to some more some more specific things. So we're going to describe a, a division algorithm and then also develop the greatest common divisor of two polynomials. Okay. So the first thing we're going to start with is the division algorithm. So we're going to state this as a theorem. So let f and g be polynomials over k and let g be non-zero, then there are unique q and r in k of t such that um, f is equal to q times g plus r, and the degree of r is strictly less than the degree of g. Okay. Okie doke. So the uh, general approach is to induct on the degree of f. So if... Um, if the degree of f is less than the degree of g, then we can say q is 0 and r is f, right? And this will kind of trivially satisfy the condition. Um, and, and again, um, I mentioned this last time that whenever we have, have uniqueness, uh, we typically show existence first and then uniqueness. Um, well. Some some authors like to show uniqueness first because um, I guess in a way it kind of motivates the construction and also in a way the uniqueness steps are typically easier. Um, but I prefer to do existence and then uniqueness because I think it's it's kind of clearer. Okay, um, so so we'll show that this is unique after we finish the general case. So otherwise. Let um, f1 be f minus a sub n, b sub m inverse g. So here, a sub n and b sub m are the leading coefficients of f and g, respectively. So what this is effectively doing is I'm missing something. I'm missing t to the n minus m g. Okay. Uh, so here, n is the degree of f, and um, m is the degree of g, right? And then a sub n and b sub m are the leading coefficients, respectively, of f and g. So here, this is, in effect, um, canceling out the uh, leading term of f. So this has a degree less than f, and so that's essentially how we're going to induct, right? Um, we're assuming that um, we're assuming that we can find such polynomials for uh, for small degrees, and then for a bigger degree, we can reduce the degree to get f one. So uh, let uh, f one equal to q one g plus r one. Then uh, just by plugging this in here, we get f is equal to q plus um, or q 
q1 plus a sub n b sub m inverse g f plus r plus r1 and so this is q and this is r and and notice that here our q1 and r1 are chosen you know in, in such a way that well uh, in, in particular degree of r1 here is chosen such that degree it's less than degree g so we know that um, here since r equals r1 degree of r is less than degree of g okay so th this is um it, it looks kind of uh foreign in a sense but if you if you write out what f and g are and sort of play with it you'll you'll see why this works okay uh and so the second step is to show uniqueness so if q1 g plus r1 equals q2 g plus r2 so essentially we want to show that uh, if i have two different choices of q and r i need to show that they're equal and the way you do that is by moving the q's to one side and the r's to one side uh, so we get g times q1 minus q2 equals r2 minus r1 and now by considering um <clears throat> by considering degrees so on the left hand side if um it is if it is non zero the degree is at least degree g right because i have degree g here i have uh, sort of like t to the m here and then if this is non-zero we have some t to the k so this is i mean this could be a constant that's non-zero but this is going to be at least t to the m uh the, the leading coefficient uh, the leading term um the right hand side has degree less than degree g because both r2 and r1 have degrees less than g so if you subtract um, there's not going to be some higher degree term popping up out of nowhere um, you can only get smaller by subtracting it could be zero uh, but of course if it's zero the degree is minus infinity which is less than degree g um, uh, thus uh, they can only be equal if both zero um so that means that r2 equals r1 and g times q1 minus q2 equals zero but g is non-zero and polynomials form an integral ring so this means that q1 equals q2 so that shows uniqueness so that gives us a division algorithm and this is going to be a very powerful tool in what follows um so something we can prove is that uh, suppose k is a field such that every non-constant polynomial uh, i'll just say s in k of t has a root so notice this doesn't have to hold um for example if k were equal to the real numbers uh you could have say x squared plus one that does not have a root um in in r uh, I, I should i guess i should specify a root in k then then such an f can be factored like so for f uh, for degree it's f equal to n um 
so so again we're supposing that k is such a field so uh, k in this uh, case is called algebraically closed um, and we'll I don't know we'll, we'll we'll kind of talk about this later but this is what this is what the hypothesis is k is algebraically closed then we can factor f into linear terms okay so the proof is that uh, we know f has some root so we can factor uh, f as t minus alpha times some other polynomial h, uh, just h, and the degree of h is less than the degree of f because by construction um, we show that if f has degree n, then h has degree n minus 1. So by induction, so, so a lot of these proofs use induction on the degree, and uh, it, it looks kind of like, like magical in a sense until you kind of sit down and think about it. Um, the idea is that essentially once you hit a constant polynomial, uh, you're done, essentially. Um, right, so if you, can, if you keep decreasing the degree by one, then you're going to hit constant eventually, and that's going to give you, you've kept factoring out sort of linear terms until you hit a constant. And that's exactly what this expression is saying. So by induction, we are done. <laughs> I mean, we, we can say that kind of boldly, but I, I explained the proof in words. So. Um, okay. So now we're going to look at um, uh, developing a greatest common divisor of polynomials. Um, and what we're going to show is that this is, this is another thing that polynomials over a field have in common with the integers, that k of t is a principal ideal domain. In other words, every ideal j is generated by a polynomial so just by one polynomial furthermore um, if j is non-zero well I get um then a non-zero polynomial of minimal degree generates G, uh, j. So this is not only telling us um, that every ideal is uh, generated, is principal, right? Principal means you're generated by a single element. Um, this is not only telling us that it's principal ideal, um, or principal ideal domain, it's telling us um, essentially how to find um, the generators of an ideal. It's by choosing this non-zero polynomial of minimal degree. It's not necessarily unique. Um, we'll show it's unique up to a constant multiple. Um, uh, but essentially the degree is what matters um, in a sense. Um, okay, so the proof goes like such. So, uh, so really, we know that such um, that we can find such a, a such a polynomial, right? 
um, if the ideal is non-zero, we just we just look at sort of the degrees of the polynomials in J and we choose the smallest one, um, which exists because uh, the degrees are of non-zero polynomials are non-negative integers, and so they're uh, by well ordering there's going to be a minimal. So let G be non-zero with minimal degree in J, which is a non-zero ideal. And um, we want to show that G generates J. So to that end, we're going to let J, or sorry, we're going to let F be any element in J. And we're going to show that F has to be a multiple of G. Okay, so um, uh, we have, in general, we know we, we can apply the division algorithm plus R with the degree of R being less than the degree of G. Um, but QG by definition is in J, right? Um, so, so why is that? Well, Q is just some element in the ring, and then G is uh, in the ideal. So if I multiply an element of the ring with a multiple, uh, with an element of the ideal, I get something in the ideal. That's just definition of an ideal. Um, and then ideals are additively closed. So F minus QG, which is equal to R, is in J, which is a contradiction. Why is that a contradiction? Well, um, uh, sorry, it's not a contradiction. Um, since the degree of R is strictly less than G, and uh, we said that G has the smallest uh, essentially a finite degree in a sense, right? The degree of zero is negative infinity by our convention. Um, so we must have that degree of R is minus infinity or R equals zero. Because if R were not zero, then R would be, would have smaller, R would be a non-zero polynomial with smaller degree. Um, but we said G has the smallest degree, so. Um, so thus, f is equal to qg. So indeed, uh, our ideal is generated by g. Okay. Um, now, if if g one and g two generate. Uh, generate J. Well, we know that since they both have minimal degree in J, they must have the same degree. So we know that the degree of G1 equals the degree of G2. And, um, well, we can think G1 being in the ideal generated by G2 implies that uh, G1 is some multiple of G2 since the degree of Q J, uh, QG2 is degree Q, oops, Q plus degree G2, uh, we must have Q uh, we must have that the degree is of Q is constant, or sorry, is zero. So Q uh, is just some constant zero. Uh, thus, the generator is unique up to a non-zero Uh, constant. Right, so we can multiply our generator by any constant. Um, and so in, in particular, uh, 
there is a unique generator with the leading coefficient equal to 1, right? Because if we take some generator, we can multiply by the inverse of its leading coefficient, which is non-zero. So, um, so that means that we get it with coefficient 1. And then it's unique because uh, if any other generator is just a multiple of that, and it's uh, only it's only going to have the same leading coefficient if that multiple is one. So, uh, in 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 what follows, we're going to be picking um, sort of this this generator with leading coefficient one, and we'll call it the sort of the generator. Typically, what we pick. Um, and, uh, we also use the word monic to refer to a polynomial with leading coefficient one. Um, fortunately, monic has a, a different meaning in category theory, but, but I'm assuming that, uh, that people who are watching this video have not really dealt with category theory. So, okay. Um, so now we're going to get to the greatest common divisor. And the way we're going to do this is um, let f1 and f2 be non-zero polynomials. Then the ideal, which is generated by f1 and f2 is generated by a, a single and we're again we're going to choose this to be monic polynomial poly g um and G is a greatest common divisor of F1 and F2. Uh, so, so I'll be, uh, th this part um, is sort of, we, we've already proven this. Um, we know that any ideal is going to be generated by um, a, a unique, I should say, a unique monic polynomial G. And uh, the claim here is that such g is a greatest common divisor and i say a greatest common divisor because you can have um sort of in the context of polynomials a greatest common divisor uh, can be up to again up to a constant multiple but we're going to say it's the greatest common divisor which is monic okay so proof uh, well, we know G is a common divisor, right? So F1 and F2 are elements of the ideal generated by G because uh, th this is equal to the ideal generated by F1 and F2, right, by, by definition. And so obviously <laughs> these elements are in, in their ideal, in their own ideal. Um, and so that means, so F1 is a multiple, oops, is a multiple of G, and F2 is also a multiple of G. So G is a common divisor. This is, this is what common divisor means in, in terms of polynomials. Um, now let H be another common oops, common divisor of, of you know of f1 and f2 um so so in other words we have f1 is equal to say p1h 
and F2 is equal to P2H. Then, then we know that F1 and F2 are then in the ideal generated by H. Then, then it follows that G is also in this ideal. Uh, why? Because, um, because, uh, um, since G generates this ideal, uh, that means that, well, in particular, we have that G is in the ideal generated by F1 and F2, which means G is equal to uh, sort of some, some linear combination of F1 and F2. So if F1 and F2 are in this ideal, then that means we can take the same linear combination, and then that's going to be equal to G, which is in the ideal generated by H. Um, and thus, G is equal to some, some like R times H. So uh, G is a greatest common divisor. Any other common divisor must divide it, must divide G. Again, um, GCD can it is uh, is unique up to constant multiple. So we take demonic polynomial. Um, so that's it for this video. Hope it helped and I'll see you in the next one.